If I hadn't made one small change to my 401k, I would have missed out on over $200,000 by the time I retired. I made a mistake when I started early on. Your 401k is one of those things that you don't have to think about very often when you're young. It's so easy to set it up in a rush when you start your new job and forget about it. So I set up all my future contributions to go into an S&P 500 index fund, which is normally a great idea until I looked down the list at more of the details and found a problem. This is my John Hancock 401k portal where it shows me my different investment options. We can see we have different categories, target date, target risk, aggressive growth. Let me scroll down to the growth section. This is where I found my first fund that I invested in, which is the 500 index fund. When I pull that up, it's all large companies and we have a blend of value and growth. And when I scroll down this first instance of expense ratio, it shows 0.05%. This is the type of expense ratio that I would want. However, when I scroll down a little bit further, I think this is a little bit deceptive. There's two other expense ratios, gross and net. The gross expense ratio includes the expense ratio of the fund, but it also reflects any fees and other expenses that the fund might incur. This is how much you could actually pay in maximum. And the net expense ratio is how much I actually paid over the last year. So they may have waived some fees or maybe they capped the fees off at a certain point. But in any case, if I'm choosing a fund to invest in, I'm gonna assume the gross expense ratio and I'm gonna plan on paying that amount. So I'm looking to find a fund that has a much lower gross expense ratio. The target date funds are great, especially from Vanguard. They have very low fees and they will automatically rebalance your portfolio to have a greater percentage of bonds and other fixed income assets as you get closer to retirement. This is great for some people. Personally, I don't like it because I wanna have complete control over my investments. So I will pass on those. But the first section that lets you get a target risk for your 401k, is a John Hancock multi-manager fund. These funds also have the highest expenses. If I click on the John Hancock multi-manager growth fund, right off the bat, the expense ratio shows 0.62. That is way too high. But when I scroll down to the key statistics, the gross expense ratio and the net expense ratio are 1.02%. This is the upper end of expense ratios that you might see in a 401k and you absolutely want to avoid that. The next fund that has kind of the middle of the road expenses around half a percent, that would be the S&P 500 one that I stumbled into on accident the first time. But what I ended up going with is Vanguard funds because the Vanguard funds are great. They always have low expenses. Unfortunately, in this case, they did not have an S&P 500 Vanguard fund. So what I did is I found the Vanguard growth fund and a Vanguard value fund. And these are both large cap funds. So I was able to do a 50-50 blend of the two in order to get a similar allocation of stocks that the S&P 500 would give. So first, when I scroll down to the Vanguard Growth Index Fund, you can see it has the 0.05% fee in the expense ratio. And then when I scroll down to the gross and net expense ratios, they are the same, both 0.05%. So by just simply combining the growth fund with the value fund, I was able to get a 10th of the expenses as the John Hancock S&P 500 fund. So this fund up here at the top, it shows the asset class investment style. This is large cap growth. And just to show you an example, when I go to the Vanguard value fund, this is comprised of large cap value companies. So a simple 50-50 split gives me exactly what I want for a fraction of the cost. So the expense ratios are different, but how does that actually affect my bottom line? How much money am I actually losing from when I start investing to when I retire? So if I assume that I'm investing from the age of 25 to 65, that's 40 years, 300 bucks a month with a 10% average annual return, I should expect to end up with $1.665 million. That's pretty good. But if we have a 1% expense ratio, now this is the, the more egregious funds, what that ends up being is now instead of a 10% average annual return, now I've just got a 9% average annual return. And the end result after 40 years, now I only have $1,265,000. That is a $400,000 difference. That is 26% less money at the end of the day just because of a 1% expense ratio. That is insane, but that's on the very high end of expense ratios. The fund that I was almost in until retirement was the S&P 500 
index fund, it had a half of a percent of expense ratio. If I reduce the return to 9.5% per year for 40 years, now my ending balance is $1,451,000. This is a $214,000 difference. And in reality, it would have ended up being more for me because this is assuming that I'm staying with $300 invested per month every month. I would slowly be getting raises. I would be putting more and more money into my 401k and that would result in more and more losses. So $200,000 is really just the lower end for what I would have been leaving on the table. Finally, the fund that I did end up going with had an expense ratio of 0.05%. This is what I like to shoot for with all of my index funds and ETFs that I invest in. After 40 years, the average annual return of 9.95% per year leaves me with $1,642,000. So this is just $23,000 in total. I would be losing 1.5% of my total investment. That's not so bad, especially over a 40 year period. So that is just the first issue. That's the first main problem that people have when they're selecting their 401k, if they're not doing it carefully, or if they let their 401k provider do it for them. Real quick, if you're enjoying the video, please do me this one small favor and hit the like button. It makes a big difference for my channel. I would really appreciate it. And I'll continue to do my part and make better and better content. Back to the video. The second major pitfall that people experience with their 401k has to do with taking money out. So most people are familiar with the early withdrawal penalty. If you take money out before you're 59 and a half, you pay 10% plus that money gets taxed at your ordinary income tax bracket. Most people know that's bad, so they think they can get around all the expenses by doing a 401k loan. But there's a major misconception here. It is not without its expenses. So most people will point to the fact that you're paying interest to yourself instead of to the bank, which that is great. However, you're having double taxation on your interest payment. So imagine the chunk of money that you saved taxes on you pull it out of your 401k and then you put it back in, but then you're putting more money in. You're not just putting in the principal, you're also putting in interest little by little every month. So you've got your portion of money that you're paying back and you've got your portion of money that's extra. Now that extra portion of money, that doesn't get the pre-tax benefit that the principal does. You're getting money from your employer, it's being taxed, and then the interest is going into your 401k. And when you pull it out of your 401k, it gets taxed again. So it's true, you're not losing all of your interest payment. Let's say you're in the 12% tax bracket, you're losing 12% of your interest payment that would have gone to the bank. So that is an improvement, but it's not the only expense. You also have opportunity costs when you pull money out of your 401k because you are losing out on the market gains. On average, the S&P 500, you're expecting 10% gains per year. So whatever money you pull out, you're gonna be losing 10% of that money every year. In most cases, you're gonna be losing money to the market and the market doesn't always go up. Sometimes the market goes way down in a year and you'll be really happy that you took that money out. However, some years the market might go up by 100% and you'll be really sad that you took money out in those cases. So it's really just a game of averages. And then the third major problem with taking money out in the form of a loan is you have a huge risk because in the case that you lose your job, you no longer have five years to pay it back. You only have one year. And if you don't pay it off in that one year, whatever is left, they're gonna count it as an early withdrawal and you're gonna take a 10% hit on that money. The third major pitfall that 401k investors fall into is not knowing how to pick funds. With my 401k provider, they have it divided into easy to understand categories. You've got aggressive, you've got growth, you've got conservative. So somebody might erroneously think, hey, I'm a conservative guy. Maybe I just want a conservative investment. I don't like to gamble. This shows a consistent return of two to 3%. I'll go with that. The problem is you are still taking a major risk. You're still taking a major gamble on inflation. Some years inflation is as high as 15%. Some years it's as low as zero or maybe even slightly negative. But on average, inflation is about two and a half percent. So you are taking a risk. Even when you think you're being conservative, you are still setting yourself up for failure if you don't know what you're looking for. In this case, you could expect 2.5% inflation. The expense ratio on this fund is 0.42%. You're not guaranteed, but you are likely to lose 2.92% 
on this fund to a combination of inflation and the expense ratio, whereas the return, historically, it has not broken above three. So with this fund, it seems like you're likely to lose money. Picking out funds that are obviously bad is one thing, and picking out funds that are consistently gonna perform well is another thing altogether. Check out this video where I go over my method for evaluating index funds and ETFs that tend to outperform the S&P 500. Catch you on the flip side.